assemble. Lounge. If you're just joining us for the very first time, make sure that you go down there and hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to do that. We are over a thousand subscribers. The next giveaway will be when we hit that magical 4,000 watch hours. Go back and check out our thousand subscribers video to see the three different ways on how you can enter that. Now, this week I picked up a pretty hefty stack of books. There were a little, there was a little bit more um, cover-wise and whatnot. I just didn't want to pick up too much at once, but a lot of them were good. Some were great, and some kind of flopped. So if you watched Hot or Flop on Wednesday, you kind of got to see which books I was after, which ones I really liked, and which ones um, I kind of just wasn't a fan of. So this will kind of be a review of what I think now after reading everything that I picked up on Wednesday and I can't wait to do this this should be a ton of fun and this is episode number one of this new series hotter flop and then this is the reviews to see what was hot and what truly did flop all right so Deathstroke Incorporated number one artistry really good um, action really good there was a ton of it the story was there. Um, it was definitely a good book. I'm excited for the next one, but I also want to make sure to not get my hopes up for the next one. I think it will be a good book, but not something that I'll pick up regularly. It might be something that I pick up every now and again and whatnot, um, depending on how often it comes out. It was a great cover. This cover is phenomenal. I'm a huge fan of Deathstroke. Um, great character, great villain. Can't wait to see what they end up doing with the character in this series. All in all, I'd say it's a solid 7 out of 10. Nothing major. Um, the artistry definitely brings up that 7. If it wasn't such great artwork, um, I'd probably bring it down to a 6.5 or 6. But Williamson and Porter are doing a really good job with this. Um, it's definitely a good book. It's definitely one I would suggest pick picking up. Harley Quinn number seven. This has been interesting. Um, I haven't read a ton of them, so I can't really say much. But I'm not a huge fan of the artwork. It's a very interesting style. Um, not one that I'm truly into, but my wife has been enjoying it. I've been enjoying the cover artwork. That's been really good. So all in all, I'd say this is a six out of ten solid. There's nothing really much to say about it. Um, good book. Good read. That's something I would say you got to pick up if you're looking for a new book to start. Simple as that. Good book. All right, Wonder Woman Black and Gold. The artistry in this is absolutely phenomenal. Solid 9 out of 10. And, I mean, you can see the artistry in this. It's such a cool style. It's very interesting. Um, the cover art on both the front and and the back are really great. It's absolutely amazing how they've done this. Um, Story-wise, again, it's been a book that my wife's been into, so I kind of peeked through the story a little bit to see what it was all about. I'm a fan of it. It's definitely a good story. It's definitely interesting. Again, there will be spoilers for some of these books. Um, this one I don't really have many spoilers about because I'm not invested in the storyline. I can't dive into it too much because I don't know that much. My wife will be able to say a lot more about it, but it is a very good book. I highly suggest picking it up. It's only on issue four, so if you can find issues one, two, and three. Um, luckily, I was able to pull out three um, last week. I actually found it a little bit after it came out, but well, my wife found it, I should say. But definitely between the two of them. Very great books. Go pick those up. Highly suggested. Overall, seven and a half, eight out of ten. Not, not great. Good. You're not not excellent, but great. It's a great read. 
definitely one I would suggest. Um, this is where it starts to get really interesting. Actually, let me do this one first. Because this is another one that's just so amazing, but it's hard to review a spawn book. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of artwork. The artwork's always phenomenal in Spawn. Um, Ted McFarlane and who's Carlo Barberi. So obviously Todd does the script and the plot. Everything that has to do with Spawn storyline has been Todd McFarlane pretty much since day one. Carlo Barberi is the current artist on these. And I mean, this artwork is just absolutely phenomenal. It's very well done, very well put together. And it's really amazing the way that it all kind of ties together and ties into what's going on in the Spawn universe. Um, all in all, storyline was really good. There was a lot going on. I know I'm not talking too much about it, but I also don't want to spoil it that much because there is some pretty cool stuff in here. Um, basically, what I can tell you is go pick it up. That's all I'm going to say on this one because there are a lot of spoilers coming later in the show. And I want you guys to watch that more than this. This one is a great book. Solid 7.5 out of 10. Um, but... Everything else I'm about to show you has some really awesome spoilers, and it is a really amazing run of books, not run of one story. So there are six books left. First one, uh, second indie. This one's from Aftershock. That one was from Image, obviously. Um, Out of Body, number four. Huge fan of this one. Um obviously our main character is trying to find out who put him in the hospital he's going through um, a new character not new character but Milton who is also a lover of the woman that he is a lover of who he is actually supporting the affair that she's having on her husband he just didn't know that he wasn't the only man involved um, so definitely a very good book um, again, Artistry by Anaki Miranda is phenomenal in this story. It is such a great storyline. And the artistry matches the story. It tells a lot. And I like the way that he can kind of jump into other people. And then it ends with a very shocking twist. So they thought that they were going... They had an opening to kind of go into... Um, I'm blanking on the name. August Frine. We thought they were able to go into August Frine's uh, mansion without getting caught. And then lo and behold, he ends up going into the basement and Dan meets August Frine. And it ends with them saying, Dan's heart has stopped so very cool twist um like i said there are spoilers for a lot of these books so don't be surprised when i spoil something big because i'm reviewing it this book easily an eight and a half out of ten very readable very well done all the books have been um eight and nines always i've never gotten a 10 out of out of body i think once i finish this storyline it could easily be at a 10 or very very close to it but this book is just a really great iteration. It's a really great continuation of three. And you get to see a lot going on with it. I can't wait to see where they go. All right. Let's get into the Marvel books I picked up this week. So two that shocked me. Black Cat kind of shocked me. I mean, this cover is phenomenal. The Infinity Score storyline has been really interesting and really well written. Um, the writer of that being Jed McKay and the artist being Villa, the color artist being Reber, and the letterer being Fernan Delgado. Um, really just amazing work all around. The artistry has been um, phenomenal and the storyline of this has been really great so in this one we get to see 
Nighthawk come back. And Nighthawk is actually trying to use the Infinity Stones and take them from Black Cat. And Black Cat thinks that Star is after her, which she still is. But Nighthawk is trying to get back to the Heroes Reborn saga storyline that had happened. And he wants to pretty much once again be a hero and be a part of that storyline because he liked it better. So that's what Black Cat's dealing with, and this will all continue in Giant Size Black Cat Infinity Score number one. I'm very excited to pick that up. Very excited to see what that has to offer because it should be an amazingly well done book if it's anything like these ones. This book, um, the series has been a 9 out of 10 solid. This book did a lot of storytelling. The artistry was good, but I feel like it still fell flat in some places. There were just, there were little things that you lost out on. And I wish there was a little bit more, but at the same time, you can't always have your cake and eat it too. So I'd give it a 7 out of 10. It's definitely worth picking up if you're in the story and you're enjoying the story because it does continue with it. Or the story arc, I should say. Um, but definitely go pick it up. Solid 7 out of 10. I wish I could grade it a little bit higher. But because of where Black Cat's been at um, over the past few months, I know what Jed McKay is capable of, and I just don't think that this is as good as some of those other ones, so I have to bring it down a point from where I feel like all the other ones are. Sorry, it is what it is. It's, it's missing that something. I don't know what it is, but you know. Extreme Carnage. This book just wanted to twist and turn with every step. So obviously Carnage ends up being um, Arthur Crane and Senator Crane ends up being a martyr for the Friends of Humanity. And it is absolutely amazing because they go through this awesome fight scene of Flash and Andy and just trying to get it all out we learn of a new symbiote uh, sleeper and silence is there and it's pretty much Flash and his crew versus Carnage and his crew at the Senator's Rally this is an absolutely amazing book very well done it's an awesome conclusion but I don't think anyone's really ready for that twist ending. Carnage escapes and ends up being on the run with Tony Stark's extremis symbiote armor, the extremiate armor, which is just absolutely amazing. It should make for amazing stories and that it's going to all continue in Venom number one will be the icing on the cake for this one. I can't wait to see where this continues, how it goes, and all of that. It Johnson, Garcia, Smith, and Guru have just been knocking these books out of the park. They should just continue with this storyline. I can't wait to see what happens next with Carnage. And honestly, it seems like there are big things coming for... Venom and Carnage. Next, one that I was very happy with, um, but at the same time, it was kind of a bland story. Kind of one of those ones where it's like, okay, yeah, it was a filler, but you liked it. So, Miles Morales Spider Man, the 10 year edition, celebrating 10 years after Ultimate Fallout 4. Issue number 30, Legacy number 270, just very well done, absolutely beautifully written, but again, just bland. There's just little things about it that you miss out on, or you miss, and then not a whole lot of action, but then it kind of gets into 
this huge twist. So obviously, Miles meets up with his girlfriend to go to the movies. And, spoiler alert, back away now if you don't want spoilers. Taskmaster is there to take her out. Or him out. It's hard to tell based on the picture because the crosshair is literally directly in between them. It looks like it's focused on Miles' right shoulder right up in here. But it could also be focused on his chest or even a little bit lower. We don't know if obviously he's ready to pull the trigger or not. But I do like that they're kind of continuing with this style of Miles writing in his journal. It's a very interesting way to do it. Um, a very interesting way to carry on this character. But it's pretty sweet the way they're doing it. I can't wait to see where this goes with Taskmaster in Miles Morales Spider-Man 31. And I guess he's going to be on the cover. And it should just be a really fun book to read. Because the story is there, I won't grade it very, I won't rate it very low. But it's still only a seven. I was kind of shocked with that. It's just it's very bland, like I said. Very, it's a very well done story, very well written. But there's not a whole lot going on, and that's where I'm kind of falling flat on the grade. Two left, and I was actually very shocked because I thought this one was going to be my top pick, but it actually ended up being the other one. Thor 17, the conclusion of Revelations Part 3, the Revelations finale, just amazing. Thor's plan in this is to simply be the last king. We don't know what that means yet. We don't really understand that. There is a twist at the end, but basically Angela is trying to lead Thor, his sister, and Freya, who is now the god of the hunt, is basically working with Angela to kind of get Thor's confidence back, get him back on the straight and narrow, stop being such a cruel king, and kind of figure himself out. For lack of a better term, he messed up, and now he needs to get back to where he was. So we'll see how that all works out in Thor 18 with the next story arc. Best book I've read this week. Nick Spencer's finale to Amazing Spider-Man. I actually had to take notes on this one because of how giant it is. It is a ten nine or nine ninety nine book, a ten dollar book, but this is the cover I ended up going with. The Kindred cover. Now Kindred had a massive twist. It wasn't actually Harry Osborn like it seemed so massive spoilers right now for amazing spider-man 74 legacy number 875 harry is a clone he's a clone he's not even the real harry osborne and then you have kindred as gabriel and sarah who don't really exist and it all goes back to before Norman was even the Green Goblin. He made a deal with Mephisto to basically come up with, um, I'm going to get fame and I'm going to trade the soul of my first son, Harry, to do this. So Harry got killed um, in this book. Mephisto um, made that deal. And then Doctor Strange is kind of battling for that. For Peter's soul, and if he wins, Peter's soul is given back. If Doctor Strange loses, because Peter loses, then Mephisto gets to keep Doctor Strange and get his soul. So it's a very interesting game of cat and mouse in all directions. And it's not even over yet in 875. There's going to be some more implications as we move into the beyond era of amazing spider-man with ben riley coming back which of course that is like the post credit scene for this book can't wait to see where it all goes but absolutely amazingly well done